In this question, we have a sample of a mystery hydrocarbon that is burned completely in oxygen to produce 357 grams of carbon dioxide and 219 grams of water only. Okay, so we have a hydrocarbon. That's something that contains carbon and hydrogen. It could also contain other elements. It's burned in oxygen completely to produce only carbon dioxide and water in these quantities. So our goal is to figure out how many moles of carbon and how many moles of hydrogen were in our sample and therefore to figure out the mole ratio of the elements in the compound and which possible molecular formulas could fit for this mystery hydrocarbon. So our first job is to figure out how many moles of carbon dioxide and water were produced when our mystery hydrocarbon was burned. So we're going to need to go to our periodic table and find carbon, oxygen and hydrogen. So here's carbon, here's oxygen, and here's hydrogen. So hydrogen has a relative atomic mass of 1.01, .01. for carbon it's 12.01, .01. and for oxygen it's 16. So we've got hydrogen with 1.01 .01 grams per mole. We've got carbon with 12.01 grams per mole and then we had oxygen with 16.00 grams per mole. Those are our molar masses. So first let's figure out how many moles of carbon dioxide we have. So first we're going to know the molar mass of carbon dioxide. So for our molar mass of CO2 we're going to have one carbon plus two oxygens. So that's going to be one times 12.01 .01 plus two times 16.00. That gets us a molar mass of 44.01 grams per mole. And remember 44.01 grams per mole means that 44.01 grams of carbon dioxide CO2 equals one mole of CO2. So one mole of CO2 has a mass of 44.01 grams. So now let's use that in our conversion table. So our question is 357 grams. And we want to get rid of the grams. We want that to cancel out. So we're going to put grams on the bottom and moles on the top because that's what we want to end up with. And our conversion factor is one mole equals 44.01 grams. So here we're going to cancel out the units at the same top and bottom, which are grams, and then multiply everything on the top and divide by everything on the bottom. So we end up with 357 times 1 mole divided by 44.01. And that gets us 8.11 moles of CO2. So let's fill that in up here. We had 8.11 moles of CO2. Wonderful. Okay. Next, let's do the same for water, H2O. So next we want to get the molar mass of water, which is H2O. So we're going to need two hydrogens and one oxygen in our molecule. And hydrogen has a molar mass of 1.01 .01 grams per mole. And oxygen has a molar mass of 16.00 grams per mole. So overall, that gives us a molar mass of 18.02 grams per mole. So remember, the molar mass tells us that 18.02 grams of H2O equals one mole of H2O. So one mole of H2O has a mass of 18.02 grams. So let's now use that to figure out how many moles of water we have. So we've got 219 grams. So we're putting that into our conversion table. We want to get rid of grams, so that's going to go on the bottom. Moles are going to go on the top, since that's what we're trying to get into. 
and then we need to match up our conversion factor so that the top and the bottom of our fraction are equal. So we have one mole is equal to 18.02 grams. And then we multiply everything on the top, divide by everything on the bottom, and cancel units at the same top and bottom. Here that's cancelling grams. So we're left with 219 times one mole divided by 18.02. And that gets us 12.2 moles of H2O. Next, we need to figure out how many moles of each element were in the sample. So we know we started with our mystery hydrocarbon and we ended up with 357 grams of carbon dioxide and 219 grams of water. So based on that, we can figure out how much carbon and hydrogen were in the sample. Now, if one mole of carbon dioxide was produced, that means that one mole of carbon was in the hydrocarbon because CO2, there's only one C in that compound. So however many moles of carbon dioxide we have, there must have been the same number of moles of carbon in our sample to produce that. So this is going to be equal to the moles of CO2. So based on that, I know that the moles of carbon in the sample must have been the same. It must have been 8.11 moles of carbon. However, for hydrogen, in water, there's H2O. That means that water has two hydrogens for every one mole of water. So how much hydrogen must have been in our mystery compound that was burned? It must be two times this amount because we've got two hydrogens alone within the water molecule. So this is going to be two times the moles of the water because it's H2O. So there's two hydrogens in one mole of water. So here we're going to have 24.4 moles of hydrogen. Okay, so we now know how many moles of carbon and how many moles of hydrogen we had in our sample. Now we need to figure out the simplified mole ratio of the elements. So mole carbon ratio to mole hydrogen. We had 8.11 of carbon to 24.3 hydrogen. So to figure out the simplest mole ratio, my first step is to divide both things or all of the things by the smallest number. So I'm gonna divide by 8.11 on both sides and let's see what we get. So on the left we now have one and on the right we have 3.00. So the fact that I've ended up with a whole number here for my moles of hydrogen, this tells me we've already found the simplified mole ratio and that it's 1 to 3. Now sometimes when you do this process and you divide by the number of the smallest number of moles, you end up with a number here that isn't a whole number. If that happens, we're going to need to try multiplying both sides by something until we end up with whole numbers on both sides. So you could try multiplying both sides by 2, see if that gets you to end up with whole numbers. If it doesn't, instead try multiplying both sides by 3, etc., until you end up with a whole number ratio between both the sides. Okay. Our final step is figuring out which of these could possibly be the molecular formula of this compound. So we need there to be three hydrogens for every one carbon. We're also told in the question that when the hydrocarbon was burned in oxygen, it produced carbon dioxide and water only. So any compound that contains something that isn't in carbon dioxide and isn't in water, that's not going to be an option here since those are the only two things produced. We don't have any chlorine produced, for example. So we couldn't have any compounds containing chlorine in our mystery hydrocarbon. Okay, so let's have a look at our options. Number one is C3H9. Okay, so we've got three carbons there. And for every one carbon, we have to have three hydrogens. So let's try three carbons times three to get our number of hydrogens. That would get me to nine. So this mo molecular formula makes sense. That works because we still have the ratio one to three from carbon to hydrogen. So I'm gonna say yes. Okay, what about this next one? Here we've got C, H, and O in our molecule. 
oxygen, that could be in this molecule because the hydrocarbon was burned in oxygen and it produced carbon dioxide and water. So there may be oxygen in the mystery hydrocarbon. We can't tell whether there is or whether there isn't based on this data. So this could be an option, so long as the ratio of carbon and hydrogen is okay. So here we've got one carbon, and then we've got H2OH. So we've got H2, and we have another H. So we actually have the same thing as CH3 with an O on the end. So this one has one carbon, three hydrogens, and an oxygen. So the ratio of carbon and hydrogen in this compound is one to three. So this one is a yes, this could be an option. Okay. What about the next one? Here we've got CH4. So if we have one carbon, we should have three hydrogens according to our mole ratio. But here we have one carbon and four hydrogens. So that's not gonna work. That's gonna be a no because it doesn't match up with our mole ratio that we expect. Lastly, we have CH3N. So in this compound, the ratio of carbon to hydrogen is correct. We've got one carbon for three hydrogens. However, also contains N, nitrogen. And looking at our question, we only produce carbon dioxide and water. We didn't produce any nitrous oxide or any other compounds containing nitrogen. So based on that, we can't have this as an option because we can't have anything containing nitrogen or anything really that isn't carbon, oxygen or hydrogen. So this one's gonna be a no. So you can see in this question, Firstly, we had to convert our mass of carbon dioxide and water into moles. Then we had to use that to figure out how many moles of carbon and how many moles of hydrogen were in our sample and use that to get our simplified mole ratio. Then we have to test each of these molecular formulas to see if it matches up with that mole ratio to see if it's a possible compound. Remember, when you're getting your mole ratio, you'll divide by the smallest number However, you don't always end up with a whole number straight away. Sometimes you might need to multiply that row by two or three or four or even five um, before you get a whole number ratio here. 